Hi, I'm Chad Kincaid with ThatGrapeJuice.net, and today we have a special guest. We have Mr. Eli Gore, who plays the Cassius Clay, Aldous Hodge, who plays James Nathaniel, Jim Brown, Kingsley Ben Adair, who plays the Malcolm X in One Night in Miami. Thank you for being with us today. My pleasure, Chad. Yes. Uh, so I, you did an amazing job playing Malcolm X. Thank Truly. you. Uh, what was your research process going into this role? Because you, I've always known him as a militant figure, but you gave him a very more vulnerable side. Hmm. I, well, I, 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 sp I, I watched him a lot and I listened to him a lot, obviously, because there was so, there's so much footage on, on YouTube and, and uh, it was, I guess it was a bit of a whirlwind of a, of a process because of the amount of time that I had to prepare. I was cast like just under two weeks before filming started. Mm -hmm. So I was, I ever sort of had, I was, I had to think really carefully about how I was going to best spend that time. And I had a lot of help. I had a, I had a young actor who, who before the pandemic came around every day really early and helped me get off book. I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to get to New Orleans and not be thinking about lines. Yeah. I wanted them to sort of be in my body. And, and, and so I guess it was just a, I guess it was a juggling act of, of dialect and study and listening to him and just trying to as much, absorb as much of the spirit as I could. But I feel like understanding the stakes of what was going on for Malcolm at this time was really, really important. Understanding the history, everything you could that's led Malcolm to here, but understanding really the what was going on around those few months around this night, the few months before and the few months after and mm -hmm. these huge shifts that were happening for him in terms of the, the feeling he was being pushed out of the nation of Islam and that the FBI were really tracking him. And yeah, he was about to start his own organization. And so, yeah, just, just, just a full immersion and just try to just figure out and as much as I could, you know, right. research. Uh, I was just, looking at uh, anything I could find on Jim Brown in the 60s, a little bit into the 70s. But I didn't I didn't move past that because I wanted to sit where he sat and, and where we meet him in the film. And also, I wanted to understand the other side of him because we're talking about purpose and responsibility. We're talking about uh, the importance of business, mm -hmm. ethics, economics. I researched that. I researched what he was saying on the culture at the time found a lot of things that were really enlightening and, and really impressive. So, you know, I just, I just dug in deep as, as much as I could with interviews and speeches and, and uh, yeah, you know, I, I, he was an impressive cat. Um, so the process for me actually began before I got the film. I had auditioned for another film that Ang Lee was doing about Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier and their three fight trilogy. And uh, I didn't get it. Kingsley actually, who plays Malcolm X in this film, had gotten that role, um, right. ironically enough. And uh, and that film didn't get made because the budget dropped out. But I um, I decided I felt like I could play him. I felt like uh, there would be another opportunity and people had often told me that I favored him. And so um, I just kept working on the character. And um, a little while later, I did a, a play called Greenwood 1964, which was directed by Ali Muhammad Ohajari, a great, talented young black uh, theater director. Um, and it was about Sidney Poitier and Harry Belafonte's friendship. And I played Sidney Poitier and I said, you know, I can, I can do this with Cassius. So um, I commissioned a play called Fetch Clay Make Man. Um, that was about the friendship, the unlikely friendship between Cassius Clay and Step and Fetch It. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then uh, as I was getting ready to put that up, uh, I found out that Regina King was looking for a Cassius Clay. So I put that to the side and everything worked out. So Regina King said, this mm -hmm. is Trump's love letter to the black man's experience in America. Right. Right. And it's so relevant today, even though this happened, what, 57 years ago? So yeah. as a public figure, as a, an actor who's black, what do you take, what social responsibility do you feel or take away from this experience? Um, I don't really take away from this experience. I'm only further galvanized by this experience because I already lived this life. Right. Um, which is what attracted me to the uh, the the job in the, in the first place. Like I saw so much potential for moving people. I saw so much potential for teaching people. And 
really getting them to understand in a, in a in an entertaining way the necessity to really sit in this conversation right um i have these conversations all too often um you know i, I dipped a toe here and there in politics <laughs> you know I, um i even worked on i remember the first time i i started working on well, she's not senator anymore. Then Senator Vice, uh, then Senator Kamala Harris's campaign for Senate. You know, and I learned a lot. Right. Um, so I've always been in the game in some some way or form, and I'm I'm love lucky when the art can sort of cross over to my personal goals, and I can use that you know as, as part of the platform. But you know, I, I feel like just uh, remove the entertainment fact as a citizen we all have a responsibility to ourselves and to you know our own legacies our own families to step up and fight and right now black people i mean we have always had to fight we have never been alleviated of that weight mm -hmm. um but now more than ever because we have so many different tools and outlets for certain advantages um even no matter how hard people try to take them away from us <laughs> we 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 still can supersede where we have been right. um in terms of how this country deals with us and we just have to be steadfast we ha we have to be unrelenting you know we have to keep pushing and it's constant motion it's constant movement it's constant art like this that reflects the change that needs to be seen right perfect that exchange between jim and mr carlton that was wow in the movie yeah. And as Regina King said, this movie is Kemp's love letter to the black man's experience in America. And I know you were born in the UK or raised. With your platform, do you feel a social responsibility with the social climate that's every that's happening with race relations and such? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, what is the role of what is the role of the actor, you know, of, of, of the storyteller? Mm -hmm. It's this idea, you know, social media, I don't have social media, but I imagine if you have a huge following that there is a real pressure mm -hmm. that what you say and what you put out there could have an effect. Yeah. Press, headlines, mm -hmm. sound bites, you know, how, how significant are they? To me, they, they feel very in and out, you know, Every 24 hours, there's new ones. It's sort of information that just is dissolving. I, so I really, you know, for me, my responsibility was, mm -hmm. was showing up to the work and being prepared. The best way to, I, mm -hmm. to honor Malcolm, the only thing I could do was, was put every second of every minute of every hour of every day that I had right. in preparing to play him. Mm -hmm. In terms of what my responsibility is now, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like maybe the political act of the actor is in is in is in the choices and in the work you put out there, mm -hmm. and not so much what you say afterwards. Um, this piece brings up lots of really interesting questions. Before I let you go, I know things are a bit different now with the pandemic, attending movie premieres, but you put so much work into this role. How is it watching yourself back? Do you watch it as much as you would if you were to attend these movie premieres or a little less? Um, we, I mean, we've done a lot of digital premieres and I think I've watched this project in particular more than other things I've done in the past just because I really like this film. Um, it's one of my favorite films, even though I'm in it. And I don't say that about anything that I've ever done. You know, um, it's just a beautiful story. Uh, it's an important story and it's done really well at every level um, with everybody that's involved. They really put their whole heart into the project. So um, yeah, so I probably watch this one more than I normally would watch other things that I've done. Right. Um, I, I usually watch myself, uh, I, I watch my work all the time, at least once or twice just for study because that is a part of the work to me. I'm seeing where the work has improved if it has at all. So it is, you know, for me in my mind, it's a part of the job. You know, the job's not done yet, so I sit there and, and go into it. But I am terrified of watching myself in a room full of people. I I don't do that. Nah. I remember one time my mom threw a uh, premiere party for me for, I had a, one of my TV shows back in the day was coming out and she you know, had it at the house and people at the house. I was in my room by myself. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm terrified. Right. Uh, it's just, I don't know, but I watch myself for, for, for certain just to see where the improvements are or where they need to be. Right. Well, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you. And again, congratulations on everything and amazing performance. Thank you very much, Chad. I appreciate your time, brother. Thank you, Kingsley, for being with us today on behalf of thatgrapejuice.net and congratulations on everything. And you did an amazing job. You wowed us. So oh, thank, you. Mm -hmm. thank you, brother. I thank appreciate you. it. So on behalf of thatgrapejuice.net, we really want to thank you today for being here, Eli. So thank you again and congratulations on this performance. You just did an amazing knockout performance. You were amazing. Oh, thank you. God bless and stay safe. Have a great one. You too. Bye-bye.